from different places We all have different names No matter what life brings us Jesus is the same We're just your Methodist To the madness Methodist To the madness Hi, I'm Beth I'm Tim I'm Jessica And we're just your everyday Methodist, Methodist To the madness Welcome yes. back to the world of Methodists to the Madness, where we talk about the madness of the world as Methodists of the world. <laughs> yes, indeed. That, that's exactly what, what we're doing here on this podcast. Um, it's participate. very exciting. I'm just yeah. going to laugh at everything. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good, Beth. So, like every other podcast episode yes beth is still <laughs> recovering from this past weekend i presume yeah so beth if you yeah. want to go into your update first then that would be cool yeah how is uh, how was the weekend beth um it was really good it was a lot of fun um i feel like there was definitely an energy of women who hadn't met at a women's retreat in four years and it was a wow. good day, but yeah I think everybody had a good time um I got in a, a I got attacked by a bear what it hurt my ear um did that actually happen the only thing that's true <laughs> <laughs> is that I hurt my ear. Oh, no. And by bear, she means hairbrush. I don't no. know. What, oh, you, what happened? Um, yeah. For those of you that can't see, Beth is wearing a head bandage. <laughs> it's yes. on my bullet. <laughs> All around her head. I want to see it. Can you see it? I don't know where the camera is. I yeah I can't really I, see it, but I see the bandage. But what what happened though? The bandage that's just my ear, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so it was Sunday morning, and I was bunking with Angie Doyle, Kathy Ankeny, and you know, <laughs> the, rest of the ladies Aubrey Yepes, Karen Herbert, Annette Guzman. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter, but I feel like I'm forgetting somebody and they're going to be mad at me. It's probably fine. Anyway, um, she was like hilariously grumpy that morning. Like everything she was saying was grumpy, but it was like in a hilarious way. And like <laughs> she hit her head on something and then said that uh, she had brain damage and that's why she was uh, uh, like, oh, oh, <laughs> for that and anyway so um we went to the kitchen for breakfast and every morning I tried to use a different coffee cup than I did before and yeah. so the cup that I used uh yesterday on Sunday morning was a uh, a it had like a skull and crossbones on it and um Naturally, That's yeah. The cup I chose. <laughs> Not a skull and crossbones person. Um, but but I thought I would choose that cup to try to ward off like some of Angie's hilariously grumpy energy. And yes. As I was telling that to Kath and Ankeny, mm -hmm. um, we laughed and then I hit my head on the side of a shelf. Oh started bleeding everywhere. What? Yeah. And oh. next thing I know, people are just like charging at me like, oh, no, what can I do to help? And I'm like, oh, I just wanted everyone to go away because like when I'm hurt or wounded, I need to go off into the forest by myself. Yes. Yeah. And people stress me out. So that happened on the last day and, and Dita saved my life. It didn't need any stitches but i feel like that was a cursed mug that i used wow i take wow. away the holy well, 
It it did have a skull and cup for us. Right? <laughs> it did. I walked right into that problem. I mean, seriously, Ben. Literally, I think. <laughs> so that happened. Um, but other than that, it was really good to see everybody and um, you know, kind of share the time together and um yeah. Uh, come home and yeah. Fine. But yeah, I did nap most of today because yes. I've had like two weekends in a row kind of that were really busy and, you know, just people everywhere. And my introvert side is like, okay, when do we get to recover? Yeah. Well, form. You know, cocoon up and then rebirth anew again. It's the answer is never, by the way. Like, <laughs> it's going to be a shell of a person for a little while. And that's okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, Jessica, Tim, what's well, new with you guys? I'll share, I'll share very quick. I feel like I'm going to reference something that Tim said last week, which... <laughs> Do you want to? I do want to preface something very quickly. If you are listening to this, you're probably like, "Man, did they not do an episode last week?" Guys, I was so busy this past week that I didn't even upload our our audio from last week. That is my life right now. So we're gonna do a dub episode next uh, tomorrow, which means a double episode. So <laughs> the goal is to have audio from last week and from tonight's uploaded okay that is so exciting anyway like people are gonna get like a double movie marathon except it's like a double <laughs> podcast marathon. i know right <laughs> buckle up and get your popcorn yeah a methodist to the madness i know right so speaking <laughs> of madness um you know tim last week you mentioned and briefly talked about being on that like train and then like just feeling like you want the train to slow down. Maybe this was a dream that I had. I yeah. don't know what day it is, but I feel like life is going by so fast and there's like all these things that I want to do. And last week was just so busy. We had our podcast on Monday night on Tuesday. I had, I was on, I was at work. I had to do instructor evaluations that evening. So I was at work until about 8.30. And then on Wednesday, I went to Variety's Entertainment Marketing Summit, and which was a blast. Um, wow. I had so much fun there because I learned so much about marketing uh, from all of the chief marketing officers, the CMOs of Let's see. Amazon MGM Studios was there. AMC, Peacock, uh, uh, Disney, uh, Paramount Plus. Now you're just naming. Wow. Um, Spotify, Odyssey. YouTube. YouTube. No, music. not YouTube, but it was uh, <laughs> one of those except Snapchat. For Snapchat. Wow. Uh, which Snapchat shared with me that 80% of 13 through 25 year olds send approximately 40 snaps per day. That's too many. That's what, what, crazy, what? Wait, guys. 40? I don't even, 40 snaps per day. I don't even use, I don't even have Snapchat downloaded on my phone. I don't, I don't either. either. So, anyways, I learned a ton of statistics. I love data, I love information. Um, Small little thing. Paris Hilton was there. But that really? was fun. Yes. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> because we were at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. So naturally, one of the Hiltons was there to talk. But she, she <laughs> spoke um, regarding her media company, 1111. And um, they've, they've only been around for about three years. But uh, in terms of their first quarter earnings, for those that are in business talk or any financial talk... We just finished up the first quarter of the year for 2024, and they've already made $50 million, which is crazy. So that's fun. What? 
Um, <laughs> just like, $50 what is happening? <laughs> um, anyways, so that was a blast. I got to learn a lot. I'll be able to bring that back to um, our students because a lot of them want to be in the entertainment industry on the business side of things. And then uh, I don't know where my life was on Thursday. And then Friday, uh, we had graduation. So I was, uh, we had a graduation. My role during graduation is to hand out diplomas to kids, um, to All our right. students that, um, graduate. And then, <laughs> uh, Beth's about to, maybe Beth won't freak out. I don't know. Wanda Sykes <gasps> was there. Wanda Sykes. Which was <laughs> crazy because I love Wanda Sykes. Um, <laughs> But then, so I feel like I was like, where, who am I? Like, what's my life? Um, Oh, wow. And then as soon as I got home, I changed because then I had to go help Amber because she had her spring festival at her school. Mm. And um, by spring, we mean 50 degrees with 50 mile an hour wind gusts. (laughs) we were supposed to do the the limbo and sack races outside <laughs> and that was a no go because our limbo thing was made out of pvc pipe and that would have just flown <laughs> everywhere so we were inside the gym and i'm telling you i had so much fun uh pastor john and cordy and julian and liliana were there they showed up oh uh, wow cuz there were like games and all this stuff that they could do there were food trucks everywhere. Um, and, uh, Aaron and Liddy and Bob were there. They came cause, uh, and I'm, and it was so funny. Bob was like, the way he was playing these games was like pretty, pretty fun anyway. But, um, <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun. I got to see Amber interact with her students. I got to meet some of her students and some of the parents. And that was exciting. We played some games and, uh, yeah, didn't get home till about 8.30 on Friday. And then Saturday, we just spent the whole day from like 9 to 4 working on the shed, finishing up the drywall. Wow. And uh, and then we wanted to finish some more of it on Sunday. So we took a, a, we took a day off from church on Sunday. We did not go to church on Sunday. Um, we we really wanted to finish this up because my sisters are coming out May 11th, that Saturday, whatever that day is. Yeah. May 11th, Saturday, they're going to, they're flying out here. And so it's their very first time that they've ever seen the house. And I want to have the shed done, not because I'm locking them in the shed, but because <laughs> of the shed. Uh, and I love my sisters. They are, both going to be graduating college in December. All Even right. One of them is 13 months younger than the other. She's just like, beat this. And <laughs> graduating at the same time as her sister. So um, I'm very, very excited about that. So in short, I didn't do the podcast audio. I feel like I'm on a fast moving train and I have no idea where the destination is. Beth. On to you. Or uh, Tim. On to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, where am I? <laughs> you got off on the wrong stop, Jessica. <laughs> I did, I did. I need to go back. <laughs> yeah, so my um experience this week, uh is well last week, I should say, because we're recording on Monday, uh, has been kind of like night and day. So I guess, um, like speaking about like, you know, how we had the sermon series, God's Holy Darkness and so forth, I would consider last episode kind of like, um, it was, I, I, I think I still got like a, a peppy sort of happy tone or whatever, but it definitely was a darker kind of moment for me, uh, last episode. And so now we have like a back to back episode thing going on uh people are going to see that dichotomy which is going to be really interesting um so i had like what could be considered like day just like the brightest day kind of like week last week um because uh so i did have some periods of like just overall like i don't know just getting a grip on reality and just sort of like understanding that uh 
how how things were and like trying to overcome obstacles and things. But I had some like low key sadness, and I was trying to figure out how I could like change that and feel better, but then like be resilient and be stable and do like everything that I I feel like I'm destined to do, like go to work, go to church, like do do this podcast, uh, do the choir, like other like social things, spend time with my mom and like be happy with all of it. Um, and so just by like uh, some random insight, I, um, I stumbled upon uh, the concept that I always knew about uh, optimism. And then I'm like, thinking that maybe I really need to take optimism very seriously. And actually, uh, I looked on Wikipedia today about um, there's a concept called learned optimism. Um, and I think that's a positive psychology term. And um, anyway, so I started practicing optimism just and suddenly I just felt like I could practice gratitude at the same time. So like I had optimism and gratitude. And I suddenly just started feeling a lot better, like on a consistent basis. And um, it, it was really like a powerful like discovery for me. Um, and I think I'm just going to continue to live my life this way. Like um, I was reading about optimism, like you don't want to be so optimistic that you aren't able to see like things uh, as they are. So you want to have some realism in there. But by practicing optimism uh, to like as much as you can while still recognizing the realness of things uh, that can foster a lot more resilience and um, just general like resistance to stress and like higher capabilities uh, potentially to, to, to get work done and so forth. And that leads me into um, like an epiphany uh, regarding um, delayed gratification. I guess I had something to that effect last week. But now I actually put it into practice um, yesterday. So I had um, a friend, I have a, I have a high school friend that uh, he and I were going to play uh, League of Legends um, in the evening. Uh, but I was the one who scheduled him in the evening. Uh, and it's because I was like, well, I have all these things that I need to do. Um, and I really felt bad. I didn't want to cancel our, uh, our um, gaming session. Uh, because I, I know that he was really looking forward to it. Um, so I uh, I didn't cancel it. I, uh, in, uh, in past times, I would have just canceled it. Like, oh, I have too much stress. I have too much going on. But I think with the optimism and then like wanting to like make it so my friend felt respected and happy and so forth, um, I just like went with it. And I knew that my mom would be happier if... I got all these things done before I played with my friend. Um, and so like, that was like the key formula that I needed to practice delayed gratification, like totally. And apparently I never like put delayed gratification in, into such like a, like a, a great scenario like that. And so I got so much done, like chores, errands, like things that I've been putting off um, before I played uh, with my friend. And it was just like, um, an eye-opening moment. So I'm I'm going to do that from now on, like that, the whole idea of like work, then play. And then uh, like Jessica's example here with her shed, like she spent nine to four uh, working on the shed and probably you relaxed after that. So that's just like, that's the way that I need to do things from now on. Like I actually legitimately delay those like, um, what is it? Those, those small rewards and just like pursue the big reward by getting all of this work done. Um, so, so yeah, it's been really interesting. And then, uh, finally regarding kind of like enjoying myself more and not overthinking things, I realized that maybe by exercising some higher level of patience for things that are not immediately gratifying could actually make it so I could, uh, like read a book or like watch a show or something that I, that someone rec recommended to me that I haven't watched in three weeks or something. Um, I, by, by being patient with the things that I desire to do, then I think that might actually give me, um, like more interest in, in doing more things and not just like going on the internet. And speaking of the internet, I'm going to try to quit internet surfing. There is no point in internet for me to internet surf like at all, basically. Um, the only time I should go on the internet is when I'm actually going to look something useful up. Um, 
Yeah. So it's, it's been really interesting, but I'm going to like push forward with um, just trying to be optimistic and, and having gratitude, like all the time, like thanking God and just being so thankful for like all the opportunities that I have uh, each and every day. And, um, and then just trying to like exercise a high level of positivity because I think it's just going to help me like overcome obstacles. And I think I might be able to inspire people, including myself. So yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting week. That's for sure. I feel very optimistic about your life, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate you, you letting us know about that. And I definitely think optimism is an incredible tool to have in your mental health pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that sometimes I could be a little optimistic uh almost to a fault where I'm like my ADHD kicks in and I'm like I can get so much done. I I know I can do this all in like 30 minutes and it's a list of about 30 items. Um, and I'm like way too optimistic about that. But <laughs> At least you're like really focused on something and like, yeah. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. So I and think then that's like, good. yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And you know what? I think optimism and delayed gratification, that's like a superpower because yeah. like you're optimistic, uh, optimistic about all the work that you're going to get done. And then you're looking yeah. forward to something really fun that you're going to do after doing all that work that you were optimistic about. Like, Exactly. That is so cool. Oh, oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention this, but I've, I've been on some kind of like thing where I come up with an epiphany uh, regarding something. And I <laughs> this is so ridiculous, but I'm like, you know, my name is Timothy. Maybe I could call myself Timothy Epiphany. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that's perfect. <laughs> Timothy Epiphany. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love God. it. Thanks. <laughs> well, speaking of epiphanies, uh, <laughs> I would love to share some uh, church updates, things that are happening in the world of PUMC, of oh, the right. States of America. Uh, <laughs> First and foremost, uh, I would like to say that this Wednesday is Food for Thought at 6 p.m. And then on May 4th, Quilters and Shawlers, Shusha Hollers, uh, <laughs> are meeting from 9 to 12 in the social hall. I'll have to let Amber know, which, by the way, I want to tell you, Beth, Amber bought a um, the little like creatures book for crocheting. Oh. And she's making a pig with wings. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so exciting. I love it. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have like really inspired her. So I'm in debt. That is so forever. amazing. <laughs> and then the um men's group, which is oh. the United Methodist men's group, uh, on May 4th, they're meeting in the fireside room for donuts. <gasps> what? what? From nine to 10? I might have to go to the quilters and shahullers and wear a mustache and keep over. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the mustache is coming. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding more? And then uh, on May 5th, oh my gosh, it's here. You guys, it is here. The spring boutique is on May 5th. All right. Vendors are needed, so please see Beth McCoy. And we just realized we were we were planning on not being at church on May 5th because we were thinking we were going to go watch Abby run her marathon. But we're oh, wow. not anymore because we realized it's too far away for us. Not oh. that we don't want to support our friend, but... It's too far. That's, so that's I heard. I heard all I heard was I don't want to support my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now I think we're gonna be able to help out with the spring boutique, which we're helping out with the missions team, and we're very excited about that. All um, right. Then on May 11th, 
two things are happening. They're in betweeners at Mike and Cece's house, and then the PUMC 101, how to grow deeper at PUMC with Pastor Jim. That's at 10 a.m. in the fireside room. And then on May 18th, the jazz concert and dinner at 3.30, which I'm very excited about that. Yeah. So, um, and then one minor thing that's happening on May 3rd, which is Friday. Do you guys know what's happening on that? No, day? no. What's happening? It is that my 37th birthday. Oh, well, so Happy I'm very birthday, early birthday. I'm, I'm getting older and I'm so excited. My dad's birthday is on Wednesday. His is May 1st and mine is on Friday. This is where the fun starts. <laughs> I'm getting closer to 40 and I'm very excited. I think <laughs> age is a wonderful thing. So for those that are nervous about getting older, I promise you it just, it's more it's exciting. Privilege yeah. to many. So. I actually love getting older because then people aren't going to like think that I'm like the youngster all the time. Like I always feel like in every group, I'm like the youngster. How do people <laughs> think of you as a youngster when you're like, 30 feet tall. <laughs> That's true. Maybe. I know. You're like a real life Gandalf. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Anyways. You should be calling them youngsters, Tim. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm going to think about it like that from now on. Your snappers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so so that's uh that's it for our church updates and things that are going on. Um now we're going to do a very brief, very brief. <laughs> we might sneeze and miss it. Beth's ministry. I do. Oh, and that's it. Oh, for I'm Beth's ministry moment. Moment. <laughs> sneeze. That was it. You're Beth welcome. is going to share in one word how she can define <laughs> the, the women's retreat. And you can't use the word injured. I was going to say women, and I thought you were going to tell me the word women. <laughs> Why would I think that? Remember, I'm on a train. I don't know where I'm at. Oh my God, joyful. That's the word. Oh, oh, that's, right. oh that's wonderful. That's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Well, now we're heading into sermon feedback, which this past Sunday, Pastor Jim shared within our Windows of the Soul uh, series. It was the second uh, week of our seven week series. And this week we focused in on uh, the, the windows of the mem memory memory i was trying to <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't remember i couldn't remember how to say memory <laughs> i remember now uh, but the, the bible reading was from first john chapter 4 verses 13 through 19 and there was a lot that was shared in terms of like we said memories and um there was a quote from Kevin Geyer that I really liked and also uh Soren Kiergaard Kierkegaard 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 and uh those were pretty powerful I'll read the first one the by Soren Kierkegaard life is lived forward but understood only backwards oh yeah wow dentist <laughs> Yep. That'll put you in a loop. <laughs> Anyways. That's, so that's interesting. One I really liked. Yeah, it was very, very interesting. And then there was a long, long quote by Kevin Geyer that I really appreciated. Um, bear with me. Maybe the reason we are drawn home is that there's unfinished business back there. Something that's come to our attention in such a way that we can no longer look away. Maybe that unfinished business is a wound that needs healing or a wound we've inflicted on someone else that only we can heal. Maybe it's an offense that needs forgiving or one we've committed that needs to be forgiven, forgiven us. Maybe there are words we need to say or words we need to hear. Maybe there's something we need to understand that perhaps all of our life we have misunderstood. 
Or maybe there is something about us someone else needs to understand. Whatever the reason, memories draw us home with gravitational force. It's a force we can resist, but only at the expense of our soul. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I I really, really like that quote. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and uh, to I I can uh, share some some stuff something. Um, the one, uh, only one thing, Tim. You're only allowed to share one thing. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think that's interesting that um the Kierkegaard quote. That Kier, mm-hmm. I don't think I pronounced Kierkegaard right, but you did. Um, you totally did. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> life, <laughs> maybe. life is lived. <laughs> life is lived forwards, but is understood. <laughs> but is um lived only be- no <laughs> life is lived forwards and understood backwards that is really powerful because that is kind of like a good quote to remember um for me to not overthink everything like if i'm just trying to understand everything forwards then i'm not going to live my life but if i choose to live my life then i'll probably have more understanding overall um, because I'll think back and why why was it such a good living experience uh, in that forward time? Um, whereas if I think about uh, the future and um, attempt to understand like what would be in the present, I'll just kind of just sit there and not really live my life. So I think that's a really powerful quote. That's great. Um, yeah. And. Uh, Unless one of you want to like jump in, uh, I can kind of just jump into my overall uh, like sermon feedback. Uh, yeah, we want to okay. hear it, Tim. Okay, that's where that's where we're at. Tim. Okay, great, great, wonderful. Um, so uh, I think that that is really interesting. That that other quote that you mentioned, Jessica, because um, I wasn't going to originally say this, but now I think uh, that's really helpful uh for me to say and that's um sometimes we encounter people in our lives that change our lives like we have childhood friends or we have high school friends or we have college friends and like they have such an impact on us like emotionally and intellectually that we feel like we want to continue to have those friends for our entire life hopefully if 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 things work out and that's what we would envision for for those friends and so it's it's actually really good timing actually that we're talking about this um this sermon here because uh yesterday I spent time with my high school friend and um I hadn't spent time with him like playing games and stuff like that for months basically um and just like out of nowhere I uh I did that and I realized how much I um, I missed hanging out with him and spending time with him. And um, it makes me think that I need to do that in like my other friendships that I have. And uh, but then there's those other circumstances where like maybe we kind of let a friendship go. And that that kind of like falls into my other um, thing that I shared in the last episode where I lost touch with my my other high school friend. And um, she uh, she and I are kind of distant now. And I feel like it's like part of my soul to like reach out to her and rekindle that that friendship with her. So maybe that's something that I can do. Um, So, yeah, I think that's really amazing that uh, when we find those people or we find those circumstances um, that bring us to that window of the soul, it, it, it ends up really bringing a lot of meaning to our life. Um, and then that, that, uh, speaking of circumstances, that reminds me of how much of a nostalgic person I am. Like, I really like to play the same video games over and over. I like to read the same books over and over. I like to watch the same movies over and over. Like, I just, I don't know, like, I, I'm actually more nostalgic than I am not like seeking out novelty. And I'm trying to change that about myself. But I got to remember how much I enjoy nostalgia um, and not forget how important that is. And so that that falls into memory, like, yeah, a window of the soul, just like 
having such fondness for those nostalgic moments. It's just like, I remember that this is so crazy, but when I was a teenager, I used to play this game called Sonic, Sonic three and knuckles, which was like basically Sonic the Hedgehog, like 2D platformer game. And I had it on my PC and with the PC, you couldn't use cheat codes. Uh, so I couldn't get the, the, the character supersonic um, with cheat codes. So I had to like actually win supersonic every single time. And I would go to this level select level or this um, level select uh, thing. That was a cheat. You could get into the level select area, but you couldn't do anything else except like do th like select whatever level you want. Well, there was this special stage two. And apparently if you repeat that same stage seven times, uh, you'll unlock supersonic. You'll get all the uh, the super emeralds. And for some reason, I thought it was so fun for me to unlock hype. Uh, I think it was hypersonic, actually, if you get the super emeralds. Anyway, so I, it was so fun for me to unlock hypersonic. I would like I, I couldn't save it like I couldn't save my game. So I would have to unlock hypersonic every single time. So I would do that same special stage seven times. And then I would be like, oh, man, this is so amazing. Then I could collect 50 rings and become hypersonic and zoom through the levels and be like invincible. And I always think back to this for some reason. Like it was such a nostalgic, like interesting moment in my life. I don't know. It's just, it's just bizarre. But yeah, uh, last point is um, I just think it's really amazing that Pastor Jim covered um, the God is love in scripture. Like I, I was wondering where God is love came from and it's right there in first John. And that is so amazing. And there's such like great information about love in there. Um, and I, I'm just really encouraged to like read through that entire uh, book of first John now, because it's just got so much like great wisdom and, and that's like really enriching that it talks about how, important um love is for god and it inspires me uh to think about how uh in the past episodes we've been talking about um or in the past episodes i've been talking about how i've been focusing on my love for god and so i think that like uh focusing on love for god when you do that you just you kind of like um you just exude love for, for everyone, like including yourself and your neighbor. And it's just like, it brings so much joy into life. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Beth, Beth any, anything you, uh, no, nope, I'm good. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> am I also share the nostalgia thing? Um, for me, it's more with music and TV shows. It drives my family crazy. Um, I <laughs> well handedly caused everyone in this house to hate Ted Lasso because <laughs> it so much. And um, it's their fault that I have to watch it so much because they're not filling me with that same, you know, warm, fuzzy joy that the show brings me. So <laughs> I have to escape into it to achieve it, you guys. Believe it to achieve it. <laughs> yeah. And um we actually did um scripture journaling on on the passage uh on Tuesday before you know the sermon and I was waiting patiently for my turn to share and then Pastor Jim was just like okay well what's on the calendar or whatever so I was like okay sometimes he forgets that I haven't shared yet. And sometimes I'm like, I haven't shared yet, Pastor Jim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we'll see what's on the calendar. So, it's kind of uh, like how we forget to share each other's life updates. Like we just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um there's actually oh, it's actually a there's a Jason Mraz song called The Minute I Heard of Love. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has a line in it that goes, some say love is blindness. Some say love is God. Some say love is kindness. Well, it's all of the above. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I really like that. Cause yeah. That's yeah. He didn't, he didn't say God isn't love. He said that, you know. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess it's kind of like, it goes both ways. God is love and love is God. Yeah. 
Or if you're dyslexic, love is dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog is, uh, well dogs sure do dog love us too. don't they um yeah i think that that's also true i think love is also dog because <laughs> i've met dog yeah actually uh for no nobody can see this but while we were recording uh, a little while ago uh beth's dog just started licking <laughs> beth's face <laughs> <laughs> He does that, and I'm like, I'm busy. You go away. But I don't because <laughs> he loves me too much. <laughs> I love him too much. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I took a, I took a lot of that away. I think in in First John four chapter uh, uh, verses seven through nine, God is the source of love, and then these next two sentences are so good. When we love others, we show we're connected to God. Ready? That's number one. Number two, when we fail to love others, it shows our disconnect to God. Yeah. Right. Right. That is really Absolutely. Let me tell you, I must be so disconnected from God when I'm driving. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, I have been realizing I really, and this will like go into my prayer requests, I need to be better at loving people in all situations yeah you know like yeah all situations yeah thing. that's wonderful um, uh, in my in my area there are stop signs and rules that are not followed like people go yeah. through stop signs people will pass you on a double yellow on a curve and people make an illegal u-turn in my it, neighborhood all like Oh gosh. Now I am like a justice person where I think I, I know <laughs> I give out my little tickets to people, my mental tickets of like you're going to jail basically. Yeah. And um and I'm just like I'm not good at loving people when I drive. And it's not like I'm doing anything negative to them. It's just more of like I find myself talking more than I should. What? Yeah. Is it the way it makes you feel inside that you don't love? Yes. Right. It, it, it like heats up my internal organs. And I, and I'm just like, not a fan of, of, um, of that. And it's only when I have to drive down to Hollywood a lot of the times. Oh yeah. Because I take the 14, <laughs> to the, <fly. laughs> to the 170 to the 101 and uh and so it's just there's a lot that's going on and, and a lot of people aren't really paying attention when they drive a lot of the times like I'll look over and someone is literally they're I don't even know if they're driving I think they're like doing their taxes in the- <laughs> <laughs> like something is happening it was last month. I know right it's it's just really anyways so yeah i totally understand i needed to hear that because it's it's just a reminder of like well yeah that's that's right you're you're disconnected from god in those moments but you know then there's times where like i'll have an extra water bottle in my car and there's somebody on the side of the road that Mm -hmm. you know appears to not have a home and so just just throw it at their head so I throw the water at them what? Yeah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. No, um, <laughs> no, I don't do that. I, so I like, we'll give them some, some water. Yeah. I think that's really important that's nice. right? when it's getting warm. So if note to people, get a case of water, put in the back of your car. And then when there's somebody that you see on the road, hurry up and get a water out and give that to them. Oh, that's so, that, I love that. And throw it at um, their head what don't throw it at their head don't throw it don't, at don't do that especially no, that was that was something time. that we said um that's not to be taken into practice uh just in case anybody was thinking so right. yes but politely give it to them and they especially, will be very grateful <laughs> yeah especially if your name is jason <laughs> if your name is jason don't throw jason's water bottle does that oh. kind of sound like don't Go chase him. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, what? Go chase water. water. <laughs> wait, I don't understand. <laughs> Please stick yeah. to 
the bottle. Chasing water bottles. Yeah. Yeah. That was a full fail. Uh, People have have turned off the podcast. Um. Uh, Wait, Jessica, I wanted to mention that when I drive and I see some person doing something crazy, I think what happens to me is I I just get legitimately confused. I'm like, wait, what is this person doing? I can see that. I can just see your confusion over Tim's face. Yeah. Like, wait, it's a... So I don't know if that can you can channel the 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 heat that you feel into confusion yeah. that actually could help. You well, know, I have felt a lot of confusion last was it last week I was driving home and I was on the 14 about to get off the exit and I was trying to get wait for a car to pass me so I could get over into the exit lane. And so anyways, I get over into the lane and then I start looking to, you know, get off of the exit. And the car that was in front of me while I was waiting to get over, I look over at them and they are giving me a particular finger that is not. What? Right. And I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You're not what I you're not part of this process, ma'am. Like this is, this is not. Anyways, so they didn't have the love of Jesus in their soul at the moment. And <laughs> so I got off on that exit. Yeah. Um, One thing um, I was going to say is, um, unfortunately, the people who need love the most are the ones who are the hardest to love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's so That's true. Ricky about this whole thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Wow. I, I experienced that a lot with like faculty. Yeah, I, I was good to say that. Yeah. Just because a lot of the the faculty that I'm I oversee, they were my instructors before. And now like now I'm their boss. So it's mm. kind of a weird dynamic. Yeah. But um but either way, and, and like there's like some ages on there where uh, um yeah. you know it's hard for them to listen to things that I say, which is like uh, you know, yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, it's like they want to know that they can trust what I have to say. And um, I think it's uh, it's me finding my way to, like, love them through that. And I feel like God God has definitely shown up in that area of my life. And I've, I'm very grateful. But it's always a continuous, continuous thing. Yeah, I've had that, too, actually, Jessica. I, I have some people that are have far more experience than I do. Um, and, uh, it's been a very humbling experience for me to just like be patient and, uh, ask for help and not be afraid to, and like kind of be respectful as, as often as I can. And I think that it it all starts with love, honestly. Um, when you're in those kind of positions where like there's there, I, I, I don't know if power struggle is the right word. But it's just very difficult to, like, coordinate yourself to make the right decisions in how you treat others so that work gets done and then you foster good, like, work relationships and stuff like that. But, I, yeah, I, I do think that if we if we try to show love first, then it kind of just all falls into place. But, yeah, it's been a really, like, challenging experience for me. And I think I'm getting it together now, too. Like with those more experienced coworkers, but, um, it's been a difficult journey and yeah, I think God has been like lighting my path all the way. Um, Mm -hmm. And then if another solution is like things that I've tried to do is when I'm starting to not, you know, put the love of Jesus first when I'm driving, I think one thing that helps is just by singing very loudly, Jesus loves me. Uh, yeah yeah loud yeah that's great instead of like saying things or shouting oh you're just really saying jesus loves me this i know and then wow you try just shouting serenity now as you drive (laughs) serenity now yeah (laughs) um, hey that's pretty neat reference And making an appearance in today's podcast, 
through the video is <laughs> an educator. Yay. Educator. Um, yeah. So uh, speaking of love uh, in, in the way that we're talking about and the way we treat others and, and so forth, um, I think that that is what I would consider the most powerful thing about being a Christian and following Jesus. Like, um, I, I, I don't like to say this, but I wish that every Christian would put love first and yes. like everything about them just exudes love. Um, and I think that the world would be a better place if we put God's love at front and center in our life. And everybody did that. Um, and yeah. yeah, I just, I just want to say that. Cause like, I think sometimes Christianity gets a bad name because people see other things that are not God's but love. The outsiders looking in are not seeing the love is all I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we can, we can be good examples let's, let's and, and show love. love. We want to see in the world. Yes. Be the love that we want to see in the world. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so nice. We did that it. And, and that is it for <laughs> sermon feedback. <laughs> sermon feedback. <laughs> <laughs> well, prayer requests. Beth, you got any prayer requests for this week? Feel like your life it has your do you feel like your life has slowed down now? Ooh, no. I'm on the train to stop. We're all on listen. Whoever's driving this train, we got to contact HR. (laughs) Excuse me. This train is going way too fast. (laughs) I just have a lot of busyness coming up over the next few weeks and have had a lot of busyness in the last few weeks. And I want to try to still somehow like maintain some semblance of being a person while also giving myself, you know, adequate time to rest. And basically all of that seems impossible. So it it probably feels that way, but I think we can just be praying for you to um, try to slow things down because I know it's easier said than done. Yeah. yeah, a prayer, a prayer that you get rest that you need, Beth, and get those moments of introversion that you need, Thank even you. even like if that means like seizing the moment or telling a- asking someone to give you that time for that or telling the moment to seize. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's Please, like the train yeah, stopping. <laughs> yeah, Please. yeah. Yeah, definitely, Beth. Prayers for you on that. Tim, what about you? Any uh, um, few rare requests? Uh, so a prayer for me to continue to like be optimistic and and exercise gratitude, and to um, actually continue to practice that delayed gratification thing, whereby I actually anticipate that I'm going to enjoy something at the end of the day or at at the end of a big window of time where I was like working on something. So a prayer is for me to have strength to continue on on that direction. And also um, for me to avoid internet surfing and instead channel that energy into like journal writing or something. Because I did that yesterday. I actually journal wrote instead of internet surfing and that actually ended up being really helpful so i almost wonder if my little internet surfing thing that i do is kind of like this nervous kind of energy i was also thinking if i can't like write maybe like i should grab one of those fidget toys or something like that so (laughs) a a prayer for me to just kind of like come to terms with all of that like not only practice delayed gratification but also be optimistic and um like go in the direction that I need to go to not internet surf. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. Will do. Thank Jessica. you. What do you have um, for us, Jessica? I just, guys, I just, I want to love people better. Um, mm. Really just want to continue being able to love people better. With I yourself. Think, 
Yeah. I think I think I can use a prayer for that too, Jessica. I, I think one way I try to love myself is by taking a Benadryl in the evening and I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sleep is really like so helpful for everything. So it, yeah, that is a way to love yourself. It is. Um, but you know what? Like I'm just I'm so excited about this whole shed thing. I'm really proud of Amber and I for being able to do this. Like we have no construction experience. Um, and we literally did insulation guys. I put my brave pants on and I went up. Yes. The brave pants. I knocked out that 12 foot, uh, uh, thing, the drywall up on the tall part of the shed. That is amazing. That is so inspirational, Jessica. So, I would be really scared to do that. So yeah, that that is a a superb like ounce of bravery right there. I felt very proud. And I just, you know, for anybody out there who needs any construction done, you can't count on us, but (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were gonna say, oh here, call me. I'll take care of your construction. (laughs) But I mean, it's just one of those things like don't, you know, just like the first sermon don't let fear take over and just do it like yes utilize the resources that are available to you google youtube like all those things and i'm just i'm very proud of of myself and amber um continue prayers for amber as she continues to wrap up the school year she's got like 30 days left which is crazy so it's very exciting. Yeah, that is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, prayers for you and uh, Amber, Jessica. That's yep, definitely in, in that in those regards. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I I want to also um, have a prayer for all the people that um, appear to not have a home that they find um, shelter from the heat and mm-hmm. they. Um, their lives are, um, they can find joy and can go about life with less struggles. Mm. Yes. That sounds good, Tim. World peace. We will work on that. <laughs> That's our yeah. new slogan. That's yeah. for, yes. Peace, we will work on that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another uh, shirt request that you can put in. For Methodist <laughs> to the Madness, where it'll say, Methodist to the Madness, on the back, world peace. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I kind of would want one of those. <laughs> Actually, yeah, me too. I can make one. <laughs> that sounds awesome. What size do you want? <laughs> can you give me an extra large, Beth? Yeah. <laughs> I would take a medium so I can leave some room for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Lord knows you don't want those tight shirts because then you don't want no room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh God. I'm gonna have to work on an accent like that, Jessica. I can't <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> now, maybe now, tune in next week for my my accent kind of like that. yeah well we're we're grateful that you listened to us today tonight this afternoon wherever you are if you're in the shower or doing your laundry <laughs> we appreciate it but uh what life. was the slogan that we came up with last week oh it- World peace. Well, no. <laughs> just kidding. I don't remember. I okay. remember it was. Um... We're obviously doing very well. Wait, me- me- wait, no, I think it was um, Methodist. No, it was a. Uh... We're stay mad. No. Are you Methodist or? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Stay oh, mad, you Methodist, you Methodist or something. Horrible. Yeah. Stay yeah. mad out there because that promotes met. world peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, one of us has it. 
Let's um, just one of us go for it. I think Beth did it last time. Beth, whatever you remember, you can go for it. We're the Methodists. Now on to the madness. <laughs> <laughs> to the madness. To the madness. To the madness. Different places. We all have different names. No matter what life brings us, Jesus is the same. We're just your Methodists. <laughs> to the madness. Methodist